Amen. A blessed day to everyone and welcome to Baptist Bible Church. May I request everyone to please stand as we begin our worship services in singing. Together, let us sing the song, O Worship the King. Narito po tayo na nagtitipon para sambahin ang ating nag-iisa at hari ng lahat ng mga hari, ang ating Diyos. On the first verse, ready, sing! O oh, worship the King, O oh, glorious above, O oh, gratefully sing His power and His love, our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. Oh, tell of His might, O oh, sing of His grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy is His, His chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form, and dark is His path of the wind of the storm. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our Maker. For our second song, we will be singing the song Under His Wings. Nakikita natin sa mga ibon, sa mga uh, manok, di ba? Yung mga inahin ay iniingatan ng kanilang mga anak. Now, how much more our God, our God protects us and cares for us. And we could always depend on His steadfast love and care for us as His children. Let us sing the song Under His Wings. All together on the first verse, ready, say. Under His wings I am safely abiding To the night depends and tempests are wild Still I can trust Him, I know He will keep me He has redeemed me and I am His child Under His wings, under His wings, who from His love can sever. Under His wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. How the heart yearningly turns to His rest Often when earth has no balm for my healing There I find comfort and there I am blessed Under His wings, under His wings Who from His love can sever under his wings my soul shall abide safely abide forever let's sing the last verse and the chorus a cappella let us all bend our voices as we sing these important truths under his wings all together ready sing under his wings, oh, what precious enjoyment! There will I hide till life's trials are o'er. Sheltered, protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Under His wings, under His wings, who from His love can sever. Under His wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide for. 
Please remain standing as I call uh, Brother Alec Villarreal for our opening prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this morning. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord God, na safe po nakarating ang lahat. Thank you for your mercy. I pray that you would, by your grace, give us hearts that is, Lord, enjoying you, fearing you. I pray that you would bless the preacher for today and may you bless the choir and everyone that is here, Lord God. Unite our hearts and minds in Christ. Bless us, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, choir, for that wonderful reminder. May I request everyone to please stand? Magsitayo po tayong lahat. And together, let us sing the song, Victory in Jesus. Ang ating pong Diyos na ating pinagsisilbihan sa araw na ito ay hindi patay. Siya ay buhay. At because of that, we know that we have victory in Him. On the first verse, ready, sing. 
I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me. Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. All the men. Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken. All the ladies. Amen. All together on the chorus. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me. With his redeeming blood, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. And all God's people loudly say, Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning and welcome to Baptist Bible Church. Good to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, we praise the Lord for His blessings that He has bestowed upon us this week. This is the last Sunday of April and we praise the Lord for all the blessings that we have received this, April, this month. And uh, we look forward for another month as the Lord will lead us to be able to serve Him more and lead more people to Christ. Well, the people ask. Where do broken hearts go? And the answer is simple. They go to Jesus Christ and they will be, He will be the one to fix their lives. And that is what Baptist Bible Church has been doing for the past 73 years. Reaching out to people that are broken, pointing them to Jesus Christ. And we do it by different ministries of our church. We start with our children's ministry. We praise the Lord for our Sunday school. Our, for people who bring their children and their nephews or kids to, the, to junior church and to that Sunday school. For, for us to be able to share to them God's Word. And also every Saturday, praise the Lord for volunteers who come every Saturday and to be able to join us in our extension classes as we, as we reach more people and more children for Jesus Christ. And that is because we want to reach all, all uh, walks of life, all ages, starting with the children. We also praise the Lord for the ministry of Baptist Bible Church for our Sunday school. Uh, it's a time for us for, to study God's Word. Uh, we start by 9 o'clock. And also we praise the Lord for our midweek service. Uh, it's time to pray and encourage one another through prayer. We have a prayer list outside. You can take one and bring it home and start praying for the prayer list listed below. Uh, we need to pray for one another. And you have, if you need prayer requests, you can just call the church and write, or write, down, write, write it down in a piece of paper. Drop it in our offering uh, bag later or call the church and then we will be able to include them in our list. We also praise the Lord for the ministry of uh, Bible studies. We have uh, the uh, Bible study for the men, as uh, announced by Brother Irving late, uh, a while ago. Every thirst, first Thursday of every month, all the men have their uh, young men have their Bible study, and every Fridays at eight o'clock, uh, and then by a Zoom, and also all the ladies. But, but every Friday by also eight o'clock, and every Saturday we have three sessions. Every Saturday. 
9 a.m., 3 p.m., and at 8 p.m. This is an opportunity also for us to be able to reach to our friends and relatives that are lost, that are broken, and pointing them to Jesus Christ. We also praise the Lord for our uh, giving. Not only do we uh, reach out to people here in our country, for the, but also for the regions, people in the regions beyond. Uh, to, share, to be able to share Christ the Savior. We do it through our, uh, supporting our missionaries, uh, the, the foreign and local. Uh, we have uh, our weekly uh, paid promise giving of 70,000 per week, weekly, uh, so that we can be able to support 69 foreign missionaries and 14 local pastors, 70,000 per week, so that they can be able to continue uh, reaching out for more people with, with the gospel. Uh, continue to pray for our uh, missionary for this week, missionary uh, Peter De Jesus. Go, they're going now, planning to go to Bolivia. So, in, in Bolivia. They are now in Bolivia. Okay, so they are now in Bolivia. We praise the Lord for that. So let's continue to uphold them in our prayers. And uh, let's pray that they will be able to win more uh, uh, people in Bolivia. Okay, so before they went to another country and then because of the restrictions, God called them to another place, and we praise the Lord for that. So let's continue to pray for our missionaries, for especially for Peter De Jesus, our missionary for this week. Also include in our prayers our missionaries from our church. Let's continue to pray for missionary Felix Arma. If you've seen him in the Facebook, he posted that his left hand is swollen, and it's giving him pain. So let's continue to pray for him so that he can continue to do the job that God has called him to do there and also for God's protection on his family. Uh, and also uh, pray for Brother Min and, uh, and Sister Hannah as Hannah in her condition right now so as they minister to people in that country. And also uh, Brother Christopher and his wife now in uh, Zambia. Brother, uh, we heard from the news that Brother uh, uh, Christopher is sick. So let's continue to pray for him and for his wife that God will continue to strengthen them and, and uh, provide for all their needs. As a church, uh, we should always uh, continue to pray for them and support them and also for other ministries, local and foreign. Okay? We also would like to thank the Lord for our, our uh, Bible school, ABBC. Let's pray, continue to pray for the faculty and then the, for the students that have surrendered their lives. Uh, to serve the Lord in full-time capacity and also for the uh, Royal Christian Academy. It's also an extended ministry of Baptist Bible Church. So we praise the Lord for these opportunities to be able to serve the Lord and um, also if you have some talents to be able to use in our um, worship services, you can do so. If you'd like to teach the children, if you would like to go good in uh, computers, that will obviously, that is okay. So you can use your talents for the or you know how to play an instrument. You can join our uh, our orchestra here and um, be able to use your talents for the Lord. And then it's very small things that you have, you can use it for the Lord and God will bless you more. And also don't forget our, uh, uh, to pray for our uh, upcoming events this coming May. Two weeks from now, we'll be celebrating Mother's Day. So this is an opportunity also to reach out to mothers. Na? Yung mothers po natin. If you know somebody uh, who's a mother, you can invite them to church. Uh, you bring your mother, if they're from the, if you're, they're from the province, then send them the, uh, our uh, Facebook page and they can join us through via Zoom. So this is an opportunity also to win more mothers for the Lord. That will be on May 8th, a day before the election. So bago natin mag-election, we pray for our, we have our Mother's Day. And also, we do praise the Lord for the Baptist Bible Church and for the uh, for God using people who have uh, started this church for Pastor Hugi, uh, who started this uh, work and then pass it to our dear pastor who is now promoted also in heaven. So on May 15, we will give tribute as a church. We will be uh, give tribute to our dear pastor for what the Lord has done in his life and uh, uh, we praise the Lord for uh, using him. Here in, in, in our country to be able to establish and win more pe people for the Lord and establish churches, in, uh, especially in the Bicol area. So that will be on May 15. So we ask some of you to be able to say something or give a uh, tribute to our dear pastor. Wag po kayong mahihiya. That will be also an encouragement of what you have learned from our dear pastor. Okay? So... Again, we're still praying for God's leading, for the right person uh, to uh, be able to stand in our midst and to lead our church. 
so that we can be more accomplish more for the work of the Lord. Okay? Do we have anyone visiting with us for the very first time? Is this your first time to be at Baptist Bible Church? I met three already. Meron pa akong nakikita na hindi ko pa nakilala. So I met Greg and Joan. Can you please stand up, sir? Uh, they are uh, OFWs and they returned and they will be returning back next month. So let's continue to pray for them. They happen to live nearby. So they look for a Baptist church and they praise the Lord. We have the sign. Okay, so we praise the Lord for them. And also I met one at the back. Uh, sir, can you please stand up wearing the white uh, polo? Yeah. I forgot your name. Sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Huh? Somebody uh, invited him to come and we praise the Lord for that. After our morning service, we have a special place downstairs. We call it BIP. So this is a time that we can be able to have a little chat with you. So we're so glad and honored that you came to our service. Okay, meron pa po ba? Before we sing our welcome song, baka po may nakalimutan po ako, huwag po kayong mahihiya sapagat narito po yung another young man here. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Andrew, thank you very much for coming. Praise the Lord for that. So another one at the back, the lady wearing the black shirt. Yan. And then two. Yeah, so we praise the Lord for that. We have uh, six visitors today and praise the Lord for that. Thank you for bringing them and inviting them. Let's all please stand up and let's show them that the Baptist Bible Church is the friendliest church in the Manila. There's a welcome here, a welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah. There's a welcome here, a welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here. Ligaya ng buhay, ligaya ng buhay, kung kilala mo si Kristo. Ligaya ng buhay Kung siya'y manunubos mo Babaguhin ang iyong buhay Kung siya ay kakamtan Ang maging kay Kristo ay tunay na Ligaya ng buhay Please be seated as we listen to a special number Pangako po ng ating Diyos na kailanman ay hindi niya tayo iiwan o pababayaan. Kaya anumang suliranin ng ating pagdaanan, anumang pagsubok ang ating harapin, makakaasa tayo parati na ang ating Diyos ay naroon. Papawiin niya ang 
iyong lungkot Kung ika'y sa kanya ay dudulot Kung ikaw ka O kaibigan Ituring mong ito'y pagsubok lang Kahit puso'y nasugat ang lahat Ngayon'y nagdaramdam Diyos ay naroon Dapat mong malaman Kaya tumawag ka Humingi at ikaw ay bibigyan Hanapin siya at masusumpungan Kumatok ka sa pinto at ika'y pagbubuksan Pagpapala ng Diyos ay iyong makakamtan Kung bito ka man ngayon, o kaibigan Ituring mong ito'y pagsubok lang, pagsubok lang Kahit puso'y nasugat ang lahat, ngayon'y nagdaramdam Diyos ay naroon Diyos ay naroon Diyos ay naroon Dapat mo Thank you for that special number. And uh, happy Lord's Day. I greet you in the name of our resurrected Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, we have dealt with the subject matter, why does the resurrection of Jesus Christ matter as we have celebrated our, our resurrection Sunday. The ascension of Jesus Christ is one of the least emphasized phases of Christ's atoning work. A lot of sermons have been devoted to the suffering, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but few of them are devoted to the significance of his ascension. At best, it is only mentioned as a sideline point, but never as the main sermon. What, are we going to, what we are going to discuss this morning, it will be fully devoted to the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will be answering the question, why does the ascension of Christ matter? The different passages that we will be looking at today will provide us with a power, powerful truth with regards to his ascension and its significance in our lives today. The central theme of this morning message is this. The ascension of the Lord matters because it testifies of the completeness of the redemption, announces his exaltation, guarantees, and guarantees that he's coming back again for us. Let me repeat, the ascension of the Lord matters because it testifies of the completeness of the redemption, announces his exaltation, and guarantees that he's coming back again for us. Shall we all stand up, please, as we read our passage in the book of Luke? In the book of Luke, and we will be reading in chapter 24, verses, uh, I'm sorry, the book of Acts, I'm sorry, the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter 1. Now I know that the author of the book of Luke is Luke, and the book of Book of Acts is also Luke. This would be his second book. Let's read in verse, from verses 6 to, 6 to 9. This is what the Word of God say, says. When they therefore have come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times and the season which the Father hath brought in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem 
and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of his sight. Verse 10, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by him in white apparel, and he said unto them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye up gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye see him go into heaven. And uh, shall we also turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 1. We're going to read from verses 1 to 3. God, who it sundry times and in diverse manners spake unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the words, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, um, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself, by himself purged our sin, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the reading of your word. This is your word. Help us, O God, to understand the significance of your ascension and your present ministry now in heaven for us believers, so that, O God, we would apply these truths to our daily lives as we see its significance being discussed today. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may please be seated. In the passage that we have read uh, from the Gospel of, uh, from the book of Acts and from the book of Hebrews, we would see the fact and the account of the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. That while he was telling them uh, that he's going to return, as the disciples were, were asking him repeatedly, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Now, you know that the Lord Jesus Christ has, has already resurrected from the dead and they were hoping in their mind that it will now be the perfect time for him to restore the kingdom of Israel. Now, probably they were also thinking of what their position is going to be at his kingdom because you would remember probably 40, 40 plus days ago, 43 days ago, they were... They were debating among themselves, Lord, uh, who, is, uh, who is the greatest among us? As they were debating among themselves, the Lord answered them with an object lesson as he was their disciples' feet. He said that the one who is going to be greatest among you in his kingdom is the one who will be the servant of all. So at this time, they were still debating that issue in their minds. Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And the Lord answered them, It is none of your business, but because that fact is reserved for my Father who is in heaven. But I have something better for you. Ye shall be witnesses, and, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And as he was telling them, he was taken up to heaven, and in the book of Mark, which Brother Irvin had mentioned a while ago, he was seated at the right hand of, of God. So it is a fact that Jesus Christ indeed ascended into heaven. But do you know the significance of his ascension? As we are looking at the verses today, we would find that there's a lot of, of significance as to why the Lord ascended and the fact of his ascension. And the first thing that we are going to discuss today is this. It is to demonstrate that the work of redemption was accomplished. The first reason and the first significance of the ascension of Jesus Christ is to demonstrate that the work of redemption was accomplished perfectly. It was accomplished perfectly. Verse 3 of the book of Hebrews chapter 1. God, and in verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, 
upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself. This is a very emphatic demonstration that Jesus Christ by himself, by himself, purged our sin. He has accomplished fully by his own, uh, by his own sacrifice, by the sacrifice of himself, the purging, the cleansing us of our sin. When he had by himself purged our sin, and he has sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now you see, one of the pieces in the tabernacle that is missing is the chair. There is no chair because the work of the priest there, the work of the high priest is never finished. But when Jesus Christ, by his offering up of himself, purged us from our sin, he sat down. One aspect of his sitting down is that the, that the work of redemption has already been accomplished. Can you turn again to the book of Hebrews chapter 10? In the book of Hebrews chapter 10, this is what we are going to read. Chapter 10 verse 12. But this man, referring to Jesus Christ, after he offered one sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. He has completed our redemption. That means that there is no longer any part of our redemption that needs to be accomplished by us or by anyone else. It was solely and exclusively accomplished by our Lord Jesus Christ, by His death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension. It was finished completely. His ascension is a demonstration is a demonstration that his work has been accepted by the God the Father and he has raised him from the dead and now he has taken him up to heaven as a demonstration of the Father's acceptance of his work. So, believers, let us remember this. Jesus Christ shares no one, with no one, the work of redemption. Wala pong kahati ang ating Panginoon sa pagligtas sa atin. Hindi po si Jesus Cristo at si Virgin Mary, hindi po si Jesus Cristo plus Virgin Mary and the apostles or the martyrs or anyone else. He exclusively uh, fulfilled, accomplished the work of redemption that we need by his perfect life, by his sacrificial and atoning death on the cross. He fulfilled the work of redemption. And by the way, this is the gospel. Ito po yung ibanghelyo na dapat nating ipangaral. That He who is God in the flesh died on the cross as our substitute. And He was buried to demonstrate that He really died and He rose again from the dead. And His raising from the dead is a, is a demonstration that He has conquered death. He has conquered death and He brings eternal life to those who would put their trust and faith in Him. And He's coming back again because He has ascended up into the heavens. The work of Jesus Christ is fully accomplished by Him. So His ascension is to demonstrate that the work of redemption was fully accomplished by Jesus Christ. Next. Jesus Christ ascended up into the heaven, into heavens to be our sympathetic high priest. Siya po ay umakyat sa langit upang siya ang ating maging saserdote. Shall we turn our Bibles to the book of Hebrews? One, this is one of my favorite books in the, in the New Testament. And of course, also kasama na dito yung book of Romans and the book of John. We have our favorite book, but this is one of, the, of my favorite book because it, it has a lot of gospel elements in it. Shall we read beginning at verse 16? This is what the Word of God says. Referring to Jesus Christ. For verily he took not on him the nature of the angels, but it took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore in all things it behooved, or it was necessary for him, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, 
to make a reconciliation for the sins of his people. Let me explain. Wherefore, in all things, in all aspects, it was necessary, that's what the word behoved, it was fitting, it was necessary for him to be made like unto his brethren. That means that Jesus Christ became like a human being in every aspect except sin. He has body, soul, and spirit, human body, human soul, and human spirit. He is like us in everything. He is not a day my God. He is 100% like us in his humanity. It was necessary for him to be made like he, to be made like us in every aspect in order that he might be a merciful, a sympathetic high priest who can understand us because he has experienced what we have we have experienced. And he could he only li he live a perfect life. That is the difference that we share with Jesus Christ. The difference is that him being human, he lived a perfect life in order that he would be made a reconciliation and offering for reconciliation for the sin of his people. Verse 18, for in that he had also suffered being tempted, he is able to succor. The word succor here means to come to an aid when we need him. He is able to come to be our help when we need him. He is able to succor them that are tempted. As a believer, we experience temptation. And sometimes we yield to, them, to temptation. But the high priestly ministry of Jesus Christ is a guarantee that we have a helper. We have a helper in time of need. Shall we also turn our Bibles to the book of uh, the same book, chapter 4? Verses uh, 14 to 16. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into heaven, into the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us come bold, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Reinforcing the idea that because Jesus Christ is there, ascended to heaven, we have a high priest who will be our helper in time of our need. Do you go through difficult times in your life? Do you feel the time that your temptation is too strong for you? Remember that we have a high priest in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, who became like us, because experienced all the things that we do. Live like us, who will be our helper whenever we come to the point that we are in need. What else? Because we, we have a high priest in heaven, we also have our advocate whenever we sin. Shall we turn our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2? Now this is after we have read the verse in the scripture in 1 John 1, 8, with regards to sin. If anyone, the Bible says there that do not deceive ourselves whenever we sin. We have to admit our sin before God. Otherwise, we would be, uh, we would be deceiving our own self. If any man say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And 1.9 says, If any man sin, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have never sinned at all, we, deceive our, uh, we are making God a liar, and his word is not in us. Now, chapter 2, verse 1, the word of God says, uh, These things have I written unto you that ye sin not. He is referring to the book that he has written, the book of 1 John, but also true to all of the scripture by extension. These things have I written unto you, you that ye sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 
and He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Whenever the believers sin, and we will sin, we will struggle with sin as believers. And the Bible clearly tells us, tells us in the book of 1 John chapter 1, that let us not deceive ourselves and say that we have never sinned at all. Because that would be self-deception and that would make God a liar. But we had also given us provision for our sin, the word of God. These things have, I, have we written unto you that ye sin not. It was given for our uh, deterrence to sin. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. And he is the propitiation. The word propitiation means to... Uh, the word pre, pre, pro, pre, the word propitiation means to turn his wrath away from us. To turn God's wrath. And he, instead of turning away his wrath from us, he turned it on his son. When, our, when the son absorbs God's righteous wrath against him completely so that he could turn to us no longer in wrath, but in favor. And he is the propitiation. Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We have an advocate with the Father. An advocate is one who defends us, one who pleads on our behalf. Jesus Christ, as a high priest, he stands before the Father, to guard us, to defend us whenever we are accused. You see, one of the things that Satan would like to do is to accuse every believer whenever they sin, right? They would accuse us before God. But Jesus Christ is stand in the, in, in, in the Father's right hand pleading for us whenever we sin. You remember when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, his wounds on his feet and his side and his arm and his hands are still there. And it is to plead for us. It is a demonstration that in his human body, as a human being, those scars remain as a token, as a reminder of the complete redemption that he has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. You, you would be wondering, bakit hindi na lang inano yon, uh, inalis yung kanyang ano yung kanyang wounded side, tapos yung kanyang uh, mga sugat don sa kanyang kamay at paa. It is a, it is an eternal reminder of his work that he has done on the cross. And whenever we are accused before the Father, his wounds pleads for us, because he has fully accomplished. Our salvation there on the cross of Calvary. Yes, Brother Dennis is a sinner, but I have died for him there on the cross of Calvary. And that is also true whenever every true believer sins before God as Satan accuses us before the Father. Now, Satan would not be successful of any accusation that would be raised against us. So what does he do? Since he realized that his accusation... Uh, against us before the Father would not work, He would accuse us before our conscience. And remember that whenever we sin, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us continually from our sins. He is our advocate before the Father whenever we sin. But also, He is our inter intercessor who lives forevermore. Hebrews chapter 7 uh, 7 verses 24 to 81. This is a very good passage. I included this because this has touched me so much. And kindly highlight this in your, in your Bibles. 24. But this man referring to Jesus Christ, because he continueth forever, has, a, has an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, be, referring to him, having an unchangeable and and superior priesthood 
than that of Aaron, wherefore he is able to sa- also to save them to the uttermost. Now the word uttermost means completely. It is not a play referring to, a, to the place. He is able to save them completely to the fullest that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who need not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, for, first for his own sin, and then for the people's. For this he did once, the word once means once and for all, when he offered up himself. Verse 28, For the law maketh men high priests, which hath infirmity, but he, but the oath, were, but the word of oath, which was since the law, maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Now the things that we have spoken, this is the psalm. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens. We have a high priest who, who lives forevermore. So that is the significance of Christ's ascension. We have a high priest in heaven who can help us in time of our need, who is our advocate whenever we sin, who is our intercessor, who lives forevermore, who intercedes for us. Romans chapter 8, verse 38. This is related also to the previous point. Romans chapter 8, verse 38. It is in the golden chapter. Uh, of the book of Romans 34 Romans 8 Romans chapter 8 verse 34 this is what the word of God says let us read let us read 31 because it is also part of this in, in context what shall we say then to these things if God be for us who can be against us? He that is spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall not he with him also freely give us all things? And then here's a question. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? Or who can condemn us? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that was risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. The question that was asked in verse 33 is this, who can lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Sino ang makakapagbigay ng anumang charge or accusation against God's elect? No one. Because God has already justified us. If you have been justified by God, then God counts you righteous before Him. If God counts you righteous, there is no condemnation that is uh, on the believer. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation, not even one single condemnation to the believer. That's why God who justifies us will also no, have no ground to condemn us. And 34, who, sh- who is he that condemneth? Or who can condemn us? No one. It is Christ that died, but rather is, is risen again. Who is at the right hand of God, and he makes intercession for us. No one is able to condemn us. Because Christ has absorbed our condemnation by his work on the cross and his resurrection and now he is continually pleading for us there in heaven as the ascended lord who is our high priest and this high priest continually lives forever so the ascension of christ demonstrates that the work of redemption was accomplished his ascension demonstrates that we have a sympathetic high priest up there in heaven and also, thirdly, it is to announce Christ's exaltation over all things. In the book of Acts, we, 
that uh, Brother Irving delivered to us in the last uh, months. Uh, this is what we will read in chapter 2, verse, chapter two uh, verse 24. This is Peter's sermon during the day of Pentecost. Referring to the work of Jesus Christ, in verse 24, this is what we would read. God, for whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it is not possible that he should be holden up by it. And I think it is in verse 34. For David himself is not ascended into the heavens, but he said yet, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit down at my right hand until I make my enemies thy footstool. So here, when Jesus Christ was ascended into heaven, it is a guarantee that he is going to, the, to have rule over all. He is going to defeat all his enemies. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he crushed the serpent's head. And his, his resurrection, he captured all of his enemies. Uh, now, one of these days is going to fully, fully conquer all of his enemies. And there will be no more evil that we have to deal with as believers. When Jesus Christ conquered all things. Now Jesus was exalted at his resurrection and his ascension. And this is what we would read in Philippians chapter 2 verse, 11, chapter 2, verse 5 up to 11. Uh, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess uh, every knee should bow, and every uh, of things in heaven, and things of earth, and things un- un- under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The ascension of Jesus Christ is an announcement that He indeed is Lord over all things, that He is the sovereign Lord over all things. Can you also turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1? Chapter 1, verse 20 to 24. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20. 20 to 24. Which he has wrought in Christ, referring, the header is referring to God the Father, which he has wrought in Christ when he raised him up from the dead, who set him up in his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come, as had put all things under his feet and gave him to be head all over all, over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now, the exaltation of Jesus Christ by his ascension is to show that he sovereignly rule over all things. Kanya po ang pamumuno sa lahat ng bagay. Now remember this, that there is a now and not yet aspect with regards to his rule. Right now, he rules and upholds all things by the word of his power. All things he upholds. The book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3, the passage that we have read a while ago, tells us that he upholds all things by the word of his power. He created all things. That's what Hebrews chapter 1 verse 2 tells us. He also upholds all things. He is the creator and the sustainer of the universe. Nothing happens that is outside the rule of and the sovereign rule of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lahat na nagaganap ay sa Kanya po yun. From the subatomic level, 
to the grand macro uh, universe. He rules over all things, even though the all spiritual realm. Jesus Christ rules over all things. He upholds all things by this powerful word. But also, right now, he rules in the hearts of the believer. He is ruling in the hearts of the believer by the Holy Spirit as he guides us into all truths. There is also his rule as a head of the church in the passage that we have read in the book of Ephesians. He rules over the church as its head. In fact, he is the one who redeemed the church by his own blood. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. He has redeemed it. It is dear to him. But also, he is going to rule in the millennial kingdom. The book of Revelation tells us that he is going to come back again and to establish his earthly reign beginning there at Jerusalem. He, he will rule. We believe that his rule will be real and it's going to be a real 1,000 years that he will rule after he has defeated the Antichrist in his seven-year rule upon the earth. He will rule as, a, as the Lord of Lords when Satan was bound into the lake of fire, into, into the bottomless pit. And after that, he will be released, Satan will be released for a while, <coughs> and he will deceive uh, nations and fight against him, and it will, be, it will happen on the battle of Gog and Magog, and after that, Satan will be captured and will be thrown forever into the uh, lake of fire that burns with fire and brimstone. Now, by the way, you have to remember this, that Satan is not the king of hell. He will suffer there in hell. He will suffer greatly in hell, and he will answer for those people whom he had deceived and for the things that he has done in his rebellion against God. So Jesus Christ will rule for 100 years in the millennial state, and he will rule forevermore in the eternal state when there will be new heaven and new earth. So it is to announce, his ascension is to announce Christ's exaltation, the inauguration of such rule uh, over all things. Now, his ascension demonstrated the completion of his work of redemption. His ascension demonstrate that we have a sympathetic high priest in heaven and his exaltation announces his rule over all things. And fourthly, it is to send the Holy Spirit to the church. Remember when the disciples were there in the upper room in John chapter 16, shall we turn in there? In John chapter 16, this is what we would read. John chapter 16, verses 6 to 15. We are going to read only a few representative verses from verse uh, 6. Verse 6. But this I have said un these things unto you. Sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, or it is for your benefit, uh, th that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove or he will convict the word of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. See me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Um, to put it in the literal translation, of judgment because the prince of this world had been, has been judged. It is, uh, is presented this, uh, the, here as a finished event. How be it? Verse 13, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So, the Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, and when he ascended, 
into the heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit. And it is for our benefit to, for him to go away so that he may send the Holy Spirit so that his presence, his, the presence, the power of, the, of Christ through the Holy Spirit will be benefited by those believers. And they will draw on his power as they fulfill the Great Commission to the church. And this happened in Acts chapter 2. If we would read there, we will not read all of Acts chapter 2. But this happened during the day of Pentecost. And when Peter preached there at the day of Pentecost, many people got saved. The Holy Spirit was given. And the signs uh, were demonstrated that he indeed was present among his people. He sent the Holy Spirit to the church. And also, the ascended Lord came not only to, dem to demonstrate the work of redemption that is finished, to be our sympathetic high priest, to, be, to announce Christ's exaltation over all things, to, but also to send the Holy Spirit and to give gifts to the church. Ephesians chapter 4. Shall we turn in there? Ephesians chapter 4. This is speaking of the ascended Lord. Ephesians chapter 4. We are going to read from verses 8, 8 to 13. 8 to 13. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Now he that ascended, what is, but he that descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Now this is referring to Christ's humiliation when he came there, took on the nature of a man, when he lived his glory, and he, was, um, and he has conquered death. When he descended, the same also ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things. The phrase, taking captivity captive, is this. He has conquered death. He has conquered Satan by his atoning work. And he has, he has taken the spoils of war with him. And the spoils of war were the sinners, his enemies before, whom he had saved, those who have put their faith and trust in him. And then uh, as part of the spoils of war, he gave good gifts. He gave gifts to men. This is a triumph. This is a, a presentation of Christ's triumph over all things. Verse 11, and these are the, some of the gifts that he has given. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So he gives gifts to the church, and these gifts are in form of person. We have the apostles and the prophets which lay the foundation of what the church should believe in. As the Holy Spirit revealed to them the truths that they need to know, and they put it into writing, and that's why we have the New Testament today. And he also gave evangelists. Those people who would take the gospel to other places on the world, the gospelizers. And he gave some pastors and teachers. And what is the purpose for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints into the work of the ministry for the edification of the body of Christ? And that is made possible because the Lord Jesus Christ has ascended into heaven, sent the Holy Spirit, and he, and by now, by his ascension, he was given the right to give gifts, to give this gift, to send this gift to the church. Now, this is a topic in itself. And lastly, it is to prepare a dwelling place for his people. John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. This is what the Word of God says. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. 
if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. Thomas said unto him, unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus answered and said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The fact that Jesus Christ ascended up into the heaven, as in the first passage that we have read in Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to um, 6 onwards, we learn that Jesus Christ is, has ascended into heaven and will come back the same way to get his own people. And for those who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be, he will be coming up back for us. That is the grandest thought. I could still remember when this is a major topic in many of the sermons. But as years go by, many of the preaching that we would read, that we would read and we would hear are only focused on life here and now on earth and how to deal with our, with our lives right now and nothing else. That's why we have these books that, that is available in many bookstores and sadly in many Christian bookstores. Your best life now. But believers, our best lives are yet to come because He's coming back for us. Tandam po natin yan. Ang buhay na ito, ito po yung pinaka worst na impyerno na mararanasan natin kung believers tayo. Our best life is reserved up there in heaven. But if you are not yet a believer, your life right now is your heaven. Yeah, totoo yun. Your life, your best life is now if you have not yet trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it will be a lot worse after the next life. So his ascension is God's guarantee that he will be coming back for us. His ascension points to us the reality of heaven. Ang pag na at ang pag ni Jesus Cristo dun sa langit ay pagpapatunay ng realidad ng langit. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 4 If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things on earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then ye shall appear with him in glory. He is coming back, believers. And the best verse that points us to us, that points to us in a lot of great detail and also with, with a lot of truths that is that is written in there is found in 1 Corinthians in the resurrection chapter 5, chapter 15 verses 50 to 58 Brethren, I say unto you that flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God behold I show you a mystery that we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed for in a moment of a twinkling of an eye in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, or at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. For, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be, both, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O grave, O death, where is the sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of sin is death, and the strength of, the, of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who continually give us victory. That's the idea, continually victory. To give us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So how do we now put these truths to life? How should we respond to the truth of our ascended Lord? It's this. Let us believer remember this, that the ascended Lord is our heavenly guarantee of the completeness of our salvation. 
Ang pag-akyat ni Jesus sa langit ay ang ating garantiya na ang ating kaligtasan ay ginanap ng Panginoon na kumpleto. Dahil nabuhay siyang muli. Believers, tandaan natin na mayroong Panginoon na umakyat sa langit at muling babalik. Garantiya niya na kumpleto ang ating kaligtasan. Wala na tayong dapat gawin kung di... Uh, Lumuhod sa kanyang harapan, kilalanin ang kanyang, ang kanyang ginawa doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo, tanggapin siya bilang tagapagligtas. Ascended Lord is our, uh, the Ascended Lord is our guarantee of the completeness of our salvation. Second, the ascension of Christ is our motivation and means to live boldly and righteously before God and before the watching world. Yan po ang ating motivation. Hindi po motivation natin dito ang peer pressure. Hindi po motivation din natin dito ang worldly applause na, uy, ang ganda-ganda ng church na yun, tingnan mo. No, our motivation for, for service before God is the fact that Jesus Christ ascended up into heaven and is now coming again. And Him being, our, being up there in heaven, He is our strength whenever we are going through difficulties. He says everything He watches over us. We have a helper in heaven to whom we can call on to whenever we are in our times of our need. He is our power whenever we would do what He has commanded us to do. He is our means and our motivation. He is our power to live boldly and righteously before God and the watching world. Now, what is our verse for this? Open our Bibles to the book of Titus chapter 2, verses 14. Titus chapter 2. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying all ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live right, soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for, uh, for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people or people for a possession, zealous of good works. Yan po ang ating motivation. Hindi po motivation natin na maging the, the best church in the world, the church that has, high, that has the highest attendance, all of those are good aims, but our motivation and our power to fulfill what Righteous living and to obey his command is this we have an ascended Lord. And lastly, the ascension of our, since the, Jesus Christ is preparing a place for us, let us lovingly wait for his appearing. The Lord is coming back again. Let us lovingly wait for his appearing. Because God is reserving rewards for those people who lovingly wait for his appearing. But how can you lovingly wait for his appearing? I remember the song in the solid rock, in the last verse. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. The only way for you to be ready at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is to be dressed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You see, all of us are guilty. Before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, all of us are guilty. We are all doomed for hell. Because that is the penalty for sin. That is the penalty that requires, that God requires for the sins that we have violated against God. And God cannot just turn out, um, overlook our sin. God cannot just uh, think of them as nothing unimportant. Because God is a righteous and a holy God, He demands sins to be punished. And because our sins against God is an infinite offense, and we have to pay for that forever and forever. 
but someone love us, God love us, that in fact he sent his only begotten son to pay the price of infinite, of our infinite sins. The God man, Jesus Christ, paid the penalty for our sins when he died there on the cross, suffered for our sin, and God's holy wrath, God's infinite wrath, was fully absorbed by our Savior there on the cross while he was hanging there for three hours. And at the, clo at the space of three hours, he said, it is finished. The price of sin has been fully paid. And then he was buried. He was raised from the dead on the third day. And now he is raised there into the heaven. Those who would believe of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, those who would repent of their sins, the Bible says, that they will be saved, they will be declared righteous, and they will be uh, dressed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You will now be ready when Jesus Christ will come again. Shall we all stand up, please? The question is, are you dressed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, as we have this invitation, I pray, God, that you would call people who are not yet saved, people who are sinners, to your saving knowledge. May they understand, although the gospel, that it is only that your son who will bear our sins and that they would trust and believe in. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Believers, are you going through great difficulties in life? Remember this, that the ascended Lord shows the completeness of our redemption. The ascended Lord shows that we have a sympathetic high priest in heaven. No matter what great difficulties you are going through, there is someone who sympathizes with you. You may feel that you have been rejected. The Lord suffered rejection also, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. The exalted Lord is the Lord who is ascended into heaven is exalted over all. He will reign all things. He will put to end to all evil that we can see in this world right now. He will put all his enemies under his feet. He is our power to do what God commands. And most of all, he has prepared a dwelling place for those who have put their faith and trust in him. Now, if you are not yet saved, this is not for you. Those things that I've said is not for you. You need to trust in Jesus Christ. You have to acknowledge that you are a sinner who stand guilty before him. If you are not yet saved, why don't you come and, and receive him in your heart? Iniimbitan kita na kilalanin mo si Jesus bilang sariling Panginoon at tagapagligtas. If you would come, there would be some people who would explain to you further the things that you need to know on how to be saved. May magpapaliwanag po dito. Would you come? It's not yet too late to receive Him in your heart as your Savior. And if you are a visitor and you have not yet trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, this is now an invitation for you to receive Jesus Christ. Meron po ba? For you who are watching online, why don't, you cons why don't you consider the things that you have heard? Why don't you receive Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior? The ascension of Jesus Christ is important. It is our hope. It is our guarantee that our salvation is fully accomplished by Him alone. Mayroon po ba? Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for what you have accomplished on the cross. Thank you, God, for your death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you, God, for your perfect life. And, O oh Lord, for those who are not yet saved, help us that 
through the things that we have heard, that they might come to the saving knowledge. Let your Holy Spirit would have a com would have would work in their lives. Lord, for us who are going through trials, who are going through great challenges in life, I pray God that we would always remember that your Son who has ascended into heaven is our helper, is our high priest, is our advocate, and is everything to us. He is our Savior who is coming back again for us to deliver us, O God. And O Lord, I pray that you would uh, let these truth, truths, O God, be remembered by us, that we would treasure it, so that, Lord, we would worship you uh, truly in our hearts. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we remain standing, please, as we uh, take our offering? At this time, may I ask Brother, uh, Brother Jay to please come and lead us in our offering as the ushers also come and take their place. Okay, Paul, so let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you once again for the challenge you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, for uh, ascending in heaven for the completion of our salvation. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. And now it's about time to give thanks through our giving. Continue to bless this offering and use it for the furtherance of your work. We ask in all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, may I ask at this time kung sino po yung mga first-time visitors? Pakita yun po yung mga first-time visitors. And, okay, so marami po tayong visitors ngayon. So, okay, so nandiyan po yung mga visitors natin and Kindly guide them to the room that we have there. Meron po kaming VIP room doon sa baba that uh, we would like to uh, welcome you there in that place. We are happy that you have visited us. Uh, may, we hope that this will, be, this will not be the last of your visits, but the first of many visit, visits if ever you are here in, in Manila. So at this time, uh, shall we all sign up as I would like to ask Brother Jeremiah to kindly come up the platform and dismiss us in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've give, given us to gather here. Uh, thank you for the preacher this morning. And thank you for the message that you have reminded us of your ascension and uh, for the completion of our salvation, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to uh, um, bring, bring us back this afternoon for our afternoon service. And as we go our ways this morning, take care. We ask you to uh, bless us and give us traveling mercy as we go home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.